Okay, one more 2015 movie to talk about before we can leap ahead into 2016, and this is The Ridiculous Six, the latest movie from Adam Sandler. Here we go. Mr. Sandler plays Tommy, a.k.a. White Knife, a boy who was orphaned when his dad ran off and his mom was murdered and he was raised by some Native Americans, and apparently this somehow granted him some kind of mystical powers, although no one else in the tribe seems to have these powers, so... whatever. And at some point, he actually meets his long-lost father, and after bonding with him for a bit, he discovers dear old dad owes some money to a vicious gang led by Danny Trejo. So Tommy embarks on a quest to raise the money to pay off Danny Trejo and get his dad out of trouble, and on the way, he runs into five half-brothers and various other strange characters. Now, as you may be aware, Adam Sandler has not exactly been on a roll as of late. He has made several bad movies in recent years, but you know what? Maybe this is where he finally turns it around. Maybe this one actually turns out to be good. No, 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 it sucks. You know it sucks. You knew as soon as you saw Sandler's name attached to it. You knew when you saw the trailer, it fucking sucks. And this is the first of four movies he's doing for Netflix. Four. What on earth possessed them to sign a four-picture deal with this guy? And of course the movie isn't funny, it's an Adam Sandler comedy, of course it's not gonna be funny. But more than being not funny, it's just lazy. But I guess this shouldn't come as a surprise. Adam Sandler got his four-picture deal with Netflix, he's got his money, he has no reason to care. And it shows. His performance in this movie seems like he's kind of going for this gruff, low-talking cowboy sort, kind of like something Clint Eastwood would do, but I don't think he's doing it because he's trying to channel Clint Eastwood. I think he's just doing it because that way he doesn't have to go through the trouble of showing any emotion. And his character has some kind of superpowers, as I said, and they are never explained, and he seems to just pull them out of his ass whenever it's convenient. In the opening scene of this movie, he defeats some outlaws using these super speed powers, kind of like the Flash, and that never comes into play again. Later on in the movie, he somehow develops the ability to shapeshift into a tumbleweed. One of Tommy's half-brothers, played by Jorge Garcia, is a mute. He only speaks in this grunting gibberish, and no one can ever understand what he's trying to say. But then at some point, about halfway through the movie, Tommy starts meditating, and then all of a sudden, he can magically understand what he's trying to say. And his voice sounds like Robin Leach for some reason. Bypassing that stupidity, if you could do this at any time, why didn't you do it when you first met the guy? This makes no sense! The jokes are not funny. At all. And some of them just go on way too long. Early on, when Tommy meets his first half-brother, Ramon, played by Rob Schneider, because when you need someone to do an insensitive racial stereotype, just bring in Rob Schneider. Put a sombrero on him and make him a Mexican. But first, he meets Ramon's mother and asks her if she knew his father, and she says, You mean, knew in the biblical sense? Ha ha ha, haven't heard that one before. He's like, no, 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 I just mean, did you ever meet the guy? He says, oh yes, I met him. I also knew him in the biblical sense. Right on that bed over there. Okay, didn't need to know that, but all right. And I also knew him in the biblical sense over there on the stairs. And I knew him in the biblical sense. This isn't funny! And I'm sure you've heard about the controversy where several Native American actors walked off the set because they found the movie insulting. I am not at all surprised. The names that were given to some of the Native American characters, uh, Tommy's girlfriend in this movie is named Smoking Fox, uh, played by Julia Jones from the Twilight movie, so clearly that series did wonders for her career. And you got other names like Screaming Eagle and Beaver's Breath, uh, Never Wears Bra, who was oddly enough played by Adam's wife. Yeah, I guess they ran out of Native American actors, so they just threw his wife in there. And oddly enough, I've had this theory for a while that one of the reasons Adam Sandler makes these movies is so he can at some point make out with a hot chick. That doesn't happen in this movie. Like, even though Smoking Fox is... 
Name is so stupid. Even though she's supposed to be his girlfriend and at the end of the movie they actually do get married. And no, that's not a spoiler. It has nothing to do with the plots. They never even kiss at all. And maybe the fact that his wife was on set had something to do with that. I don't know. But anyway, getting back to the unfunny jokes. Well, there are some moments in this movie that aren't really jokes. They're just the characters in the movie doing disgusting things and we're supposed to laugh because they're doing disgusting things. And clearly it's just the audience that's supposed to react to these because none of the characters in the movie do. At some point they stop in a barber shop that's run by Steve Buscemi because he has no standards and he'll appear in anything. And they do this long, long thing where he's taking this ointment and he applies it to some guy's rash and then he takes that same ointment still in the same hand the same stuff he used to put on the guy's rash and then smears it on another guy's face to use it as shaving cream and then takes some of it and starts applying it to Ramon's donkey's ass just go with it and then he takes some of that stuff is like hmm I wonder if this make good lip balm starts rubbing it all over his face like how long is this going to go on it wasn't funny in the first place. Just end this fucking scene. And speaking of Ramon's donkey, he apparently suffers from explosive diarrhea. That's the joke. And when I say explosive, I mean explosive. Like, you remember the anime sequence in Kill Bill where anytime someone gets stabbed, there's just this fountain of blood that comes flying out? It's kind of like that, except with shit. And you know, I will say it kind of got me the first time, partly because it just came right the fuck out of nowhere and I wasn't expecting it, but also because it's a terrible effect. I mean, clearly Netflix did not give Sandler a Hollywood budget for this movie. This is cheap looking as hell. There's one scene in particular where this movie feels like it's trying to be smarter than it actually is. Um, at some point, Mark Twain shows up because why not? And at first I couldn't tell who the hell the actor was supposed to be because he was wearing a shit ton of makeup. I looked it up online, it's Vanilla Ice. How Vanilla Ice became an Adam Sandler regular, I have no idea. But anyway, he would say something that I guess was supposed to be funny. It wasn't, but I get the impression that's what they were going for. And then he'd be like, oh, I just dropped some satire on all y'all, ho ho even though what he was saying was not the least bit satirical at all. And you just know the jackasses who made this movie were like, so Mark Twain was known for satire, so we're gonna work that into the script, even though we don't actually know what that means, but that's okay, because the people watching this movie won't know what it means either. They're all stupid, right? <laughs> Fuck you. I will say it was a bit refreshing to see an Adam Sandler movie where he wasn't trying to do a silly voice because he tends to do that quite a bit. But the other characters in this movie more than make up for that. Of course, you have Rob Schneider, who's doing his crappy Mexican impression. You got Jorge Garcia's character, the mute, who just speaks like, Yeah, that got old after a while. And then there's Taylor Lautner's character, who was apparently playing this uncultured hick, and he spent the entire movie just talking like this. The <laughs> whole ain't that just the darndest thing I've ever seen? Oh God, why? And for a while, I assumed all the brothers would just end up talking funny, but then Luke Wilson and Terry Crews show up to play the last two brothers, and they just speak normally. So. I guess they ran out of ideas for voices, I don't know. And it is surprising just how many people are in this movie that really shouldn't be because they are so much better than this. I mean, of course you have, you know, a bunch of Saturday Night Live cast members and you got some Adam Sandler regulars like Nick Swartzen and Dan Patrick and Vanilla Ice, apparently he's one of them now too. But then you have guys like Nick Nolte who plays the father of the Ridiculous Six, Harvey Keitel, what the fuck? Uh, John Turturro, if you thought Transformers was a step down from him, oh no, 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 that, that Citizen Kane compared to this shit. 
And speaking of John Turturro, he is in one of many scenes in this movie that really didn't need to be there. At some point, the Ridiculous Six stumble upon him while he's trying to teach a bunch of Chinese guys how to play baseball. I don't know why. And then they all get involved in this big baseball game and it just goes absolutely nowhere. And at some point, there's this musical number and just... Why are they doing any of this shit? It has nothing to do with the story. It's just, why? And of course, the answer is because they're trying to pad this shit out to two hours. Two hours. I could go on and on, but really, I think I've given you a pretty good idea of what you can look forward to with this movie. It's awful. Don't waste your time with this one. Just, just don't. And I've been trying to figure out if this movie is better or worse than Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West, and which one of these two Jack Holes made the worse Western comedy. Really, does it even matter? They're both awful, and they should both be ashamed for making these movies. Who cares? They're both terrible, and you should never see either of them. Let's just leave it at that. And that is all I'm going to say about The Ridiculous Six. So until next time, fuck Adam Sandler.